Hey, what is going on guys? RVZ Stealth here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the best mid laners for Season 7, Patch 6.24. So this patch, there was only really one good change to mid lane, and that was to Rylai's, as well as Leandri's too, so that did definitely affect uh, the mid lane meta, and some champions did get stronger, and some did get weaker. So that being said, let's get into the video. So the format I'm going to be doing this video is I'm going to talk about the tier one champions for mid lane. And then after that, I'm going to talk about the tier two champions. I'm not going to do a tier three for mid lane. And the main reason for it is because there's so many mid lane champions. There's around like 40 or 50 mid lane champions or champions that can be played in the mid lane. And therefore I feel like there's not really a point in going over like every single one of them. I'm only going to mention the ones that I think are pretty strong right now. So starting it off, the first champion in the tier 1 category here is going to be Ziggs. So unlike a lot of the other mid laners, Ziggs really didn't get affected too much by the changes to Rylai's. Ziggs really wouldn't ever build Rylai's very often. It wasn't really a core item in his build, and therefore with that item getting nerfed for a lot of the other mid laners, it makes Ziggs definitely a little bit stronger now. He's one of the best teamfight mid lane champions in the game. His ultimate's damage, like an amazing mid-game team fight can just win your team the fight single-handedly and as long as you can hit your skill shots as Ziggs in a team fight then you can definitely carry very hard as him. I think the main thing though right now that's tipping Ziggs over the top is the fact that he's one of the best tower pushing mid lane champions because of his passive and his W. Ever since they did change the towers to where you now get 650 gold if you get the first blood tower, it just makes Ziggs such a strong pick. If he is going up against a melee champion in the laning phase, he's almost guaranteed to get that first blood tower because he can constantly shove them into their tower. If he is going up against like a non-wave clear mid lane champion, it's going to be very easy for you to get so far ahead as Ziggs. And he is one of the only mid lane champions that hasn't been nerfed in just such a long time. The last time Ziggs got nerfed was sometime last season, so over like a year ago now, and a lot of the other mid lane champions, uh, they've been nerfed here or there so with them getting nerfed and with Ziggs not really getting touched and actually Ziggs got buffed like a few patches ago he's actually a pretty underrated and a pretty strong pick right now in my opinion and then when and when should you not pick Ziggs so I would look to pick him if your team is lacking team fight or if you do lack wave clear he thrives in both of those categories and also I would try to avoid a super mobile enemy team comp if they do have a lot of dashes and a lot of blinks then it is going to be harder for you to hit your skill shot as Ziggs. Next up on this list is going to be Corky. So Corky is actually a somewhat similar champion to Ziggs. He does have very good poke like Ziggs. He also does have a pretty good team fight because he does a lot of burst damage. And if you do get ahead with Corky in the early game, your mid game power spike is super strong. Once you do get Trini Force and your Gunblade, then you can start to deal a ton of damage and carry pretty hard with him. He's also one of the best roaming mid lane champions, which makes him a great pick, especially for the lower elos because in the lower elos people aren't really going to be they're not really going to expect like a corky to roam at level six he's really not played all that often so once you do get your package you can look to go for an easy roam and i would look to go bot lane like if the bot lane is pushing out look to go bot and try to pick up a double kill and snowball the game he does do a lot of mixed damage as well being ad and ap so it does kind of force the enemy mid lane player to run mr glitch and armor seals they can't really run just the MR glyphs and then scaling health seals because if they do that then your auto attacks are going to hurt for quite a bit and then as for when and when you should not look to pick Corky he is one of the most versatile mid lane picks he really doesn't have any hard matchups in the laning phase or any champions that just hard counter him if you are looking to like round out your team comp or something or if your last pick and your team does not have a lot of crowd control from the mid lane or you lack that like good CC ability for team fighting then I would look to pick maybe a different mid laner in that situation because Corky does not provide any crowd control. 
Next up here is going to be Velkaz. So right now, Velkaz is definitely still a very strong mid lane pick. He also did not really get affected by the Rylai's changes because personally, when I played Velkaz mid or when I played Velkaz mid, I don't even go Rylai's on him. I usually just build like full damage, Morellos, Ludens, Rabadons on him. And I don't think you really need the Rylai's on Velkaz mid. So those changes didn't affect him too much. He's got a very good kit overall though. His team fight is super strong. He's got great wave clear as well. He's kind of like, I'd say he's a little bit better version of Ziggs. They're definitely very similar champions and they do have like their specific strengths and weaknesses. For example, Ziggs is a really, really good tower pushing mid lane champion and Velkaz, he lacks the uh, tower pushing ability, but he does definitely have more reliable damage in team fights. It's a lot easier to like miss your skill shots with Ziggs in my opinion than it is for you to like hit an easy ultimate with Velkaz in a team fight. He does do a lot of AoE damage though. His Q, his W, his E, and his ultimate all do AoE damage. So if you do get ahead with him, then you can definitely carry team fights very hard. He is also one of the longest range mid lane champions. So you can really pick him into anything and you can do really well. A few champions that I would definitely look to pick him against are Rise and Annie. Both of these champions, they require getting really up close to deal damage and they have to like walk towards you to deal their damage. So if they do end up doing that, you can just throw out a Q as Velkaz and burst them down with your full combo. And then when and when should you not pick Velkaz? So I would like to pick him against like those shorter range mages in the mid lane. And then I would try to avoid heavy dive. Whenever I'm playing a mid lane champion that does not have a gap closer this patch, I usually just ban out Vi because I think Vi is just extremely strong right now in the jungle. So if you do end up banning out Vi, then you can still do pretty well like into most enemy team comps. The next champion here in the tier one category is going to be Brand. So Brand got a lot stronger this patch, in my opinion, with the changes to Rylai's and Leandri's. A lot of the other mid lane champions, they did get hurt by the Rylai's changes because th they were champions that they did rely like on that ability power and on the 40% slow to be effective. But because Brand, he's got his passive to where his passive was the main uh, slow that he'd get from that Rylai and his passive, it does the dot slow. So previously, Rylai's in last patch, it would slow for 20% for dot abilities. And this patch is going to slow for 20% for no matter what type of ability it is. And therefore, it's kind of just makes brand like pretty much the same. It doesn't really affect him too much, but because the item did get a cost decrease and because Leandri's and Rylai's is such a strong combo on brand, he's a really good pick this patch. The combined decrease in cost of those two items was 700 gold and that just means you're going to be hitting your mid game power spike a lot quicker with Brand in this patch. He is one of the best team fight mid lane champions too. His ultimate and his passive in a team fight can just deal so much damage. He's a really good pick in this tank meta too because his passive does do percent health damage. A lot of the other mid lane champions, they do fail to perform well against those tank champions because they don't really have any way of like shredding their health and the tank champions can just like easily jump on them and burst them down but because of brand's passive and because he can slow the tanks down really easily with his rylies he's definitely a great pick for this patch and then when and when should you not pick brand so like i said for velkaz just try to ban vi out this patch if you are playing in a mobile mid laner also try to avoid a heavy dive comp and then i would try to avoid braum as well if the Braum is smart, then he will save his uh, he will save his unbreakable for when you do throw out your ultimate, and then your ultimate's not really gonna deal any damage. But other than that, I would look to pick him in most other situations this patch because he is a really good mid lane pick. And then to round out the champions in the tier one category is going to be Ari. So right now, Ari is just a very versatile, very reliant and safe mid lane pick. You can pick her into almost anything and you're always going to do pretty well, at least in the laning phase. You're not really going to be countered by any mid lane champion. If you are in a harder matchup, then you can just farm very easily with your Q. I think her charm is definitely what makes her a great mid lane pick as well as her mobility. But her charm, if you can just hit that one 
one good uh, E in a team fight or in a late game fight, then you could just end up winning your team the game. In the background gameplay here, you'll see like the amount of charms that I hit that game, which ended up getting us into 5v4 situations and then just allowed us to win those team fights really easily was like really high. I think I hit at least like three or four really good charms that game, which ended up winning our team the game. She also is a very mobile mid lane pick, and she is one of the better roaming mid lane champions. So at level 6 as Ari, look to shove the wave out and look to go for some roams because with your ultimate and with your charm, you've got great roaming potential. And then for when and when you should not pick Ari, I would try to avoid a very mobile enemy team comp. Of course, you're not going to be able to like avoid this every single game, but if you are last pick, for example, and you do see the enemy team comp have a super mobile comp, then I would maybe not pick her in that situation because it is going to be a lot harder for you to hit your charm. And then I would look to pick her though against a skill shot reliant enemy mid lane champion. So someone like a Zareth or a Lux, Ari can do really well against those champions because at level 6, for example, if Lux throws out her E or her Q and tries to hit you with that, then you can use your ultimate to dodge it and go for a very easy all-in on them. So basically, she just does well against those champions because she can dodge their skill shots with her ultimate. And then in the tier 2 category for this patch are going to be LeBlanc, Annie, Malzahar, Twisted Fate, Cassio, Victor, Syndra, and Kale. So if this were last patch, Victor and Syndra would probably be in the tier 1 category. The nurse to Rylize definitely did affect them more than a lot of the other mid laners because these two champions are burst mages. They rely on their one shot combos like in team fights to be effective and because you're taking away 25 AP now from the Rylize and you're also removing a lot of the slow from the item, it is going to affect them quite a bit. I think this patch we will see them go back to building maybe like a Rabidon's early on, maybe in maybe a Morello into Rabadons for Syndra, but the nurse to Rallies definitely did hurt them a bit this patch. And then as for Kale, I was almost debating whether or not I should put her on the tier 1 or not, but I put her on tier 2 because she doesn't have the best matchups in the laning phase against the champions in my tier 1 category. She does get outranged by champions like Vel'Koz and Ziggs, and Ari can also do pretty well against her. She is a great pick against Assassins though, which is the main reason why she is tier 2. She does really well against like Zed, Talon, Rengar, Kha'Zix due to her ultimate and because those champions, they are being played quite a bit right now, she is definitely a very good pick in the mid and in the top lane. For Annie and Malzahar, the main reasons why they're on the tier 2 or in the tier 2 is because both of them didn't really get affected by Rylize, and they're also just very easy and very effective mid lane champions. Their ultimates are very game changing abilities and they're very easy to use. So if you can just like get that one good ultimate off with Annie in a team fight and you can just use your Malzahar ultimate on the priority target, then you are going to do very well with these champions. And then as for LeBlanc, Twisted Fate, and Cassio, they are definitely higher skill cap mid lane champions, but I feel like right now, if you can play them well, they can definitely carry very hard. For example, with Cassio, the amount of DPS you can put out in a team fight is just, I want to say, better than any other mid lane champion. If you can constantly be hitting your Q and you can get your E off on the opponent, then you can deal a load of damage in team fights. For LeBlanc, she's one of the better assassins right now. I think she she is probably the best assassin that you can play if you can play her to her fullest potential. And then for Twisted Fate, your roaming potential you have with this champion and the snowball potential you have is probably better than any other mid lane champion due to his ultimate. So once you do hit level 6 as TF, look to be using your ultimate whenever it's off cooldown, go for the CDR boots rush, and just try to snowball lanes out of control. So that is going to be all for this video guys. If you did enjoy then be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you guys have not already. So thanks for watching, have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.